Hey, hey there everybody, well done. We're here again. Well, we only just got off the wheel from over there where I was making those tea bowls. And um, these are just some that were left over <coughs> that I had wrapped up before I went off to Anderson Ranch some weeks ago. And um, in fact, we are, I'm just gonna, I'm just about to dip some more of these. I've just been adjusting the thickness of the glaze. So we can talk a little bit about the glaze. Let's just bring the camera a little bit closer. Um, I know you're always interested to know the details of all these things, aren't you? I hope we can get enough light on the situation here. Yeah, as you know, with this camera, I'm always struggling to get enough light in the picture. Anyway, that glaze, what I'm going to do is um, just demonstrate this for you. Um, this is a very simple glaze. It's just made up of red clay, red low temperature clay, and wood ash. And that's like 50-50. 50% -50. 50 wood ash and 50% red clay. And you don't need, you, you, sorry, you, you need to make sure that, I'm talking about 50-50 dry weight. So, um, get yourself some dry, some dry clay. And some and some sieved wood ash. You need to sieve it through at least an 80 mesh um, sieve. So um, I've in fact just been taking some of the water off the glaze. Now, if you've got a glaze, if you have a glaze that is um, too watery and you want to to be able to use it, what you're going to have to do is let the glaze, let it settle out so that the water is on the top and all the heavy stuff set sediments out down to the bottom. You may find that you've got half an inch of extra water there on the top. Um, so if, you, if you've got some water on the top, you need to think, well, how am I going to get that water out without mixing it all in with the glaze? because it mixes very easy. If you try and pour it, you see, you'll find you're pouring the glaze out. So what you want to do is get yourself something like a lid like this, okay, and if you just float it on the top and then dip one side down so the water, the extra water just runs over the edge, okay, you see, like that, doesn't collect any sediment then, does it? And you can offload that into a bucket and you can do that as many times as you need and if you're in a if you're in a situation where you need to use a glaze that day and you're not sure then take off more water than you think okay because you can always add it back afterwards but if you think oh that's enough okay that'll do we'll give it a stir once it's all stirred up and then you find afterwards oh sugar <laughs> I should have taken more water off <laughs> you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> okay, so just a simple little thing, but you need a, a, something flat like that. It's better actually than using a sponge, okay? So just depress it in like that. First of all, just float it on the surface, you see? And then just depress one side of it so that the, the water begins to, to run over the edge and into the, okay? I'm pouring it back in because the water level is okay, uh, the amount of water. I'm just going to wash my hands because, you know, wood ash, wood ash, when you mix it with water, a lot of the soluble um, compounds leach out. Don't you like that word, leach out? <laughs> leach out into the um, leach out into the into the water so your hands be begin to feel very soapy but it also can begin to not be very it can be a bit caustic caustic on your hands 
just to bear that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to give this a stir. Now I've already been through this procedure and I've already got some water off, you see. Now I've got here in front of me, I've already glazed some. And they were applying the thickness rather thinly. So I had to dip them a couple of times. And sometimes you'll have to do that with glazing a pot. You'll have to give it a second dip. But I think I've got the thickness now better, not so watery. Um, and I've got four more to do there. So once I'm satisfied that the glaze is, is well mixed. Now these that are remaining here, I don't know if you can see this, but they, they're not dry yet and they still retain some moisture and that's the good time to dip them. You don't want to dip them when they're too soft because once you put them in the slit, the slit is just like a wet blanket all over the surface of the pot and the pot, if it's already got moisture in it, won't absorb more, more, more moisture particularly and you can get a situation where the pot will flop <laughs> because it's just too soft. So what I recommend is that you have them on the dry side of leather hard, if you follow me, on the dry side of leather hard. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to double dip these and then I'm going to finger wipe some of them, which is a way of, of doing a very simple uh, decoration by wiping my finger through the glaze. I'm sure you're familiar with that. So we're gonna, because these pots have got a, a trimmed foot, it's very easy for me to hold onto the pot using the trimmed foot like that. Now I'm gonna take the glaze not over the foot, so the foot is actually gonna remain free of glaze. So it's okay to hold it there like that. Okay, I'm gonna double dip this. So that you take it down to the mark, the level that I want to take it to, hold it there for a few seconds, okay, and then like that, and then let the glaze come out from the inside. Now by nature these kind of clay, this kind of glaze has got a lot of clay in it, and by nature they do tend to apply rather thinly to the pot even though looking at it here looking at the consistency of the glaze it, it looks to me like it's a good thickness in fact it looks like it's thicker than an ordinary typical glaze but that's deceptive it needs to be uh, somewhat thick okay so scrutinizing the as it's drying, scrutinizing the thickness of the, of the glaze. Okay, we're going to put that one down. Now what I could do with that is do like a finger wipe decoration through that. That's one, one way of doing it. Another thing, a way I could do is to let it dry further and then scratch through to the clay underneath. And you get then the color of the clay body coming through the scratches. I'm just going to put that one down anyway, just for the moment, while I'm gabbling on here. Um, let's have a look at one which way it may be suitable for, say, a finger wipe decoration. We're going to do this one. So, again, we're going to hold it by the foot, and we're going to take him down. Now, I've done this before with you, and you can use a glass jar to practice this double dipping technique. OK, 
Okay. I'm just looking around to see if I've got a glass jar or even a plastic cup and I could just show you that again. All right, now having dipped it, all right, I'm now just looking at the surface of the, the shininess of the glaze for the drying, see how much it's drying. Okay, I think I'm gonna now take my finger and I'm just going to do some wipes through the glaze. You have to do this rather rather quickly not be fussy about it okay now if you hit it at the right moment where the glaze is just beginning you can see how I've hit it there with my finger that's just a simple finger wipe decoration I'll show you these when they're fired and you can tell me whether you like them or not. Now this one you see it's got a bit more of a throwing ring on it. Uh, I don't know if I want to do finger wipe on that. I just want to leave it a little bit. Leave, always leave room for the kiln to do something to the pot, you know. Don't feel you've got to over decorate it the whole time with lots of marks and things. Just leave room for the kiln to Just hold the hold it over the bucket just in case there's some drips that want to come off. Okay now that's that's fully glazed on the inside as well. While while we're talking about it. Um, You can get yourself, this is something you, if you're serious about making pots and pottery, this is something you've got to learn how to do, okay? There's no point in farting around with wax, waxing the bottoms of everything, as I see people do. Don't do that. For goodness sake, learn how to do it the proper way and you'll be glad you did for the rest of your potting career. <laughs> That's what I say, if you're serious about making pots and you really you know, learn how to double dip. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate with this, with this plastic cup, and you can do the same. It needs to be fairly stout. Okay, you can also use a glass jam jar. Let's just see if we we are still in the picture. Okay, yeah, I think we're pretty much there. So. Um, I mean, of course, you, I'm saying use one of these, but the, the good thing about using one of these is you can see whether you glaze the inside right immediately because it's transparent, okay? So, we're, we're, we're just, I'm just going to dip it down halfway, all right, and then I'm going to double dip it, and you'll see that it coats the inside. So basically, you go down like that, and then I'm just going to go, oop. <laughs> Oops, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> yeah, maybe that idea is not a good one. Using a using a, a plastic mug. Um, mm, 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 mm. Hang on a minute. Let me just. Okay. I'll... <coughs> I'll demonstrate it another way. So that, in that case, what I did was I was holding it like this and I crimped it like that, you see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it by the top, okay? I'm going to pretend it's a different kind of pot. Okay, and we're just going to dip it halfway and then I'll double dip it and it'll dip, do the inside, hopefully. So, down and then, and now up. There it is, you see. Now we only glaze the outside to there. But as you can see, 
it's completely brown, isn't it? It's covered because I got it right the way, right the way to the bottom and inside. And that's what you need to learn to do. You need to learn to develop that, mm, that, like that. You see? So you can. What I'm saying is, you can practice on something like this, and then you don't have to ruin your pot. Not that you're going to ruin it because you can always wash it off, of course. But dip it down halfway and go like that. You see, it should. If you imagine my hand is the level of the glaze, you go down and then you jerk it like this, quickly up, but you don't let it come out of the, don't let the lip of the pot here escape from the, from the, from the water, uh, from the glaze, from the surface of the glaze. So it's down, quick jerk like that, okay, and then out. If, you, if it comes out, then it won't work. You know it's worked because I can feel the weight of glaze inside this now. And you can see it then coming out, you see. So you... Get over there. <laughs> so that's what you've got to do. You've got to learn how to do that. And if you do, it's, it's one of those things, it's a bit like, it's a bit like tap centering. You never regret. Okay, we're going to go down, hold it a few seconds. And up. Let's see if we can do another finger wipe on here. Just looking at the surface here to see how it's drying. I used two fingers this time instead of one. Okay. There it is, a finger white decoration. Now, the thing about these finger white decorations is you have to be rather quick, direct, bold, don't be timid. Just hit it, you know, just do it. And you'll get better as you, as you go. I, I don't profess to be the world's um, best finger wiper. <laughs> but you can, you can just get more fluent at it and more relaxed about it, you know. It's, it's all in the, the in the way of these doing these tea bowls, you know, it's sort of like certain, you know, we're kind of like we're relaxed, aren't we? We're not too, we're not too strung out about it. We're just sort of, and that's the way. That's the best way to do them, I think. If you're going to sort of say, well, well, Simon, what is the spirit in which we should do these tea bowls? Should we be all strung up and strung out and stressed out and uptight and? And I would say, well, no, the opposite. You want to be just a bit laid back, relaxed, just, no. That's the way to do them. So we've got a little mess here. We're going to get the sponge, give it a little wipe. Now, these, these tea bowls here <coughs> that you just see me do, I'm going to put those out in the sun now, outside to dry off, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they can. I may not just put them out immediately, actually. I don't like putting out things immediately in the hot sun. It's quite sunny and warm out there. Sometimes it's best just to let them settle down a bit before you put them out in the direct sun. So, and there was I thinking, well, this is going to be a very quick little clip because I've only got a few little, few little tea bowls here to, to, to glaze. But you see, there's so much to learn, isn't there? And um, even just a simple thing, there's so much to talk about how we can, how we can do things and how we can improve and, um, 
that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's all about practicing and learning. And... So, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com, and um, we've got some tools there. We're soon going to have some leech treadle wheels there, uh, etc., as you've heard me talk about. So please go there, visit that. If you have any got any questions, write to me. And um, thanks for all your your emails. I try to answer most of them. Sometimes I don't manage all of them, but that's life. <laughs> okay, keep practicing. We'll see you. Bye bye.